I think we're all beyond frustrated, and we see the impact it's having on safety and security and the economy. Um, the, the positive side is, I, I think, you know, and, and you know, the yesterday's news is equally frustrating, right? I mean, um, but I'm hopeful, and we met with the, pre a group of us met with the president this week. Uh, he invited us to the White House to talk. And, you know, I think there, there are clearly places where we can find common ground, but we have to actually talk to each other. And the, the biggest issue right now is that neither side is sitting at the table. And what we're trying to do is and actually is, encourage is that to happen. Is there an actual negotiation that could be had? Is there something that says, yes, you're going to give some money, but it's going to be used for these purposes, or you're going to get something else like a, a DACA deal or a Dreamers deal? What, what, so, what, yeah, what, so what does a negotiation look like? So when I've talked to, you know, we, we, I've talked to a lot of folks, and we all do, you know, Democrats and Republicans, and both the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. And we met with senators earlier this week as well. Um, I think there, and we all believe there is a place where we can find common ground, whether that's on, you know, tough borders uh, with fixed immigration. And I think there's, there's definitely an agreement there. We've, we had one last year, and we couldn't get to the floor of the House of Representatives to actually vote on it. But if it had, we would have passed it, a deal that would have included Dreamers and uh, um, for, for border security. And, you know, many of us believe we need tough borders, but we also need to fix our immigration system. So I, I think there are enough people, but the question is, can we actually, you, you can't do it unless you open the government first. It's very, very hard to have these discussions when you feel like you, you're so in a box. A, are you behind when Nancy Pelosi said, when, when, when President Trump said to Nancy Pelosi, yeah. if I let you open the government and come back to you 30 days later, we, 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 can we have a conversation at the wall? And she said, no. Are you behind that? You agree with there, that? There's a lot of interpretations of actually what, the, those comments were, but so I don't, I'll, I'll say this is what I agree with. If it was said that way, do you support that? I support border security, right? Okay. So, well, you know, I, every side is going to have different interpretations of, of what that means. For me, I think there's many options on the table, and I think a lot of us believe that, to have tough borders. But, you know, the, the, the problem is we're talking past each other. And I, I really think that, and this is where I was going back to, if we actually sat down and really had that conversation, uh, I, I know because we're having it every day among members of Congress. There's a place to find that com the place to find common ground where you can have tough borders, and actually make sure we can get Dreamers here and TPS and, and other groups that are obviously wondering every day if they're going to be able to stay in the country. Would you put a billion and a half, two billion dollars towards a wall? I'd certainly let anything be on the table in a negotiation. Is right? any kind of a wall of any sort part of your negotiation? Well, I believe in. I, I believe that physic, physical infrastructure could be part of uh, a negotiation. It sounds right. like you want to have that debate after, after the government you, is open. Right. That was the issue, right? In that is, the, that is the entire issue. The entire issue is, Andrew, like, you can't have this real discussion, and you obviously can't negotiate on TV, um, but what you can do in any negotiation, because you all know you've all been in negotiations, you actually have to sit at the table, but you've got to get the government open first, because you can't really... And, and by the way, Republicans and Democratic senators feel this way. This is not and members of the Congress, right? It's not just Democrats. Republicans feel the same way. If we're, we can't run a government of every time just shut it down if we don't agree. You, that's not the way you run a government. We can have disagreements, but you, you open the government. You don't put our safety and security and economy at risk. And you then have the negotiation. That's what we're asking the president for. We said, let's find a period of time to open up the government. And by the way, a bipartisan group of senators asked for the same thing. And both houses have days. passed right. bills that would have reopened the government. We just, just yesterday voted for, once again for legislation to reopen the government. And by the way, the Senate won't even consider the legislation. That's why you have Democrat and Republican senators and members of Congress saying, open up the government for a period of time. Give us time to work that's under the normal circumstances, the normal way we operate, and then, you know, we can have the conversation you're talking about between both sides. You know, we started this out saying that you see there, that there could be light at the end of the tunnel for this, but your meeting with the president was before Nancy Pelosi canceled the State of the Union address and before President Trump canceled her trip to Afghanistan. It seems to me that the shenanigans are just upping in terms of uh, this is Tip why, by the way, there's going to be, it's going to be constantly back and forth. It's going on for a month now, right? Back both sides. Right, but are you both, less both hopeful sides. than you were a couple of days ago? No, because I think the pressure is growing on both sides. And I think the pressure, you, when you have TSA workers not coming in, when you have our, our air traffic controllers telling us the skies might not be as safe as they should be, when you have law enforcement saying we're stopping investigations because we don't have enough personnel in the FBI saying that. When you've got small businesses in my district coming to me and saying, I can't get the permits, I can't open up, I've got millions of dollars of equipment sitting here. When you've got, the, when you've got economists saying this is going to have a real impact, including this morning I was just reading, yeah. on, on our economy, and it could have an impact on the, mar on the stock market in the short run. Um, uh, when you start having those pressures, I think both sides will feel it and, and are feeling it. So that's why I'm hopeful 
that we right. get to the table. But we have to get to the table, and that's kind of the but break the we're looking for. The pressure you're talking about, I mean, that has to build on senators who then eventually pressure Mitch McConnell to actually bring something to the floor to kind I think of... The set, I think the pressure, as you know, what I heard this week from senators is actually that pressure, is that they realize that. But they, beyond just the day-to-day -day pressure, they recognize this is not the way to run a government. Yeah, no you don't think there's going to be any pushback eventually on Democrats on this? I mean, right now... There is, there's no well, pressure. I think there is that. already. I think, the, I think both yeah, sides. You feel, you feel think, pressure on you? I think, of, of course. I mean, I feel pressure on me because... You don't because think that, that, that once, once the president said that it was, that it was his shutdown and Schumer has sort of held firm on that, that, that I, right now you, you don't feel that you're more in the driver's seat? That's why no one's really come to the table well, yet. I think both sides... You know, when I talk to members on both sides, they both feel like they're winning because they're hearing from their bases that they're winning. You know, do I think we're in a better position? Sure, but this is the problem. The day-to-day -day gamesmanship is the problem. You need to actually think about the long term, and I think right. we're all losing. Do you support right? Nancy? That's the Talking issue. about gamesmanship, do you support uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, move to uh, delay the State of the Union? You know, I think that, again, what I get back to, I think all these things need to actually stop and we need to go to the table. So you so, don't support that? No, I think that she I, I just, comple she's completely, I think it's a smart move to say we should get the government back open and delay things. Obviously, the state of the union is going to happen, but to delay things until we get there is a fair, I think, a very fair thing. But that doesn't stop the fact that I think we've got to actually talk to each other and stop, uh, you know, and I, and I think the games played yesterday with the plane, I think all these are just, they've got to stop. What we need to do is actually talk. That's why you're asking who's losing. I think the American people are losing. My constituents are losing. And that's why we need to open up the government to have this discussion. You, you said something a little bit ago about how TSA agents are not working with pay. Air traffic controllers are warning we may not be as safe in the skies. Do you think Americans are at risk as a result of this? I know what I'm hearing from those of us, the, from the air traffic controllers. I, you know, I, I, I know what I'm hearing and that concerns me. Right. You know, I, do I, I, you know, the reports I'm getting is that everything is safe right now, but there's, they're very concerned about if this goes on, what could happen. And I think that's what we should all be thinking about, right? Why, why we've got to reopen the government. Why are the Democrats not making a true economic argument on this though? Because one of the things that I would suggest is currently everyone, nobody's feeling it in a meaningful way yet. But it gets exponential. Well, the, worker, the workers are feeling Well, well the, the federal workers are. But I'm saying it gets exponential later on. I'll give you examples. IPOs that were supposed to come to market, right. all of a sudden don't come to market. Mergers that were supposed to happen or get approved don't, don't happen. All of the people that were going to work on all of those things start. I mean, you could see the cascade effect. And I think it does ramp like a hockey stick in a meaningful way, but it probably doesn't happen for another month. I, well, I think, of course, it's happening. I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of businesses that it's at small businesses in my district, that whether that's small business loans or businesses that are not able to open their business. I was at a uh, business in my district a couple weeks ago called Elementary, which is a microbrewery. They just invested in a million dollars worth of new equipment. They're waiting on a permit from the federal government they need to open up. Can't open up. And there's, there's case after case. There's call, folks calling to our office who's saying, I, I've got a problem that I can't open up. So I think it's actually already having that impact. I think you're right that that's one of the things, Andrew, we should be stressing and continue to stress. We are. But, you know, as you know, there's a lot, there, there's a lot, a lot of things and a lot of noise. And, and this is why, I, I, again, I, I really believe we've got to get to the table, have a period of time where we reopen the government to, to work on this issue, to find that deal, um, and, and get to the table now. And, um, and that's what I'm going to keep pushing for.